Oh. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to another program, Issues in Focus with Shubiki Vibos. And I am so delighted once again to have you uh, as usual. I know there are many persons who are tuning in. There are many persons who would usually share this broadcast so that as to help somebody to overcome issues that uh, you may not be facing personally, but then somebody may be facing. So I just want to welcome all our viewers this afternoon. And of course, before I get any further, I usually like to pray before I begin officially. So let us pray. Dear God and everlasting Father, we are thankful for yet another day. I pray in a special way for each and every person that is viewing this afternoon. I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will be with them. And for anybody who may be suffering with guilt issue, may you help them that they will, that they will be able to overcome it. Have your way, we pray, through Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. So I know some of you may be wondering, who is this gentleman with me um, today? I know all the time I've been over two weeks now, I've been trying to see how best we can get. I can get somebody else on. And I told you last week, Monday, that I'm going to have a professional person to deal with the issue of guilt. So thank you, Jesus. Here we are today. I have with me Pastor Osley Edwards. Uh, some of you may know him. Some of you may not know him. He is the... Uh, Sabbath school superintendent, Sabbath school leader, and um, the public affairs and religious, religious liberty leader at the Guyana Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. He was the previous district pastor for the West Burbies district, and those are villages from Union to Ithaca. So this afternoon, pastor is going to explore a bit. We're going to go through a bit on guilt. And um, remember, as I said before, share this broadcast. Somebody else may be affected. Um, uh, so at the end of the day, we can help, we can all help each other. So those of you who would have tuned in last week, we would have looked at um, guilt, and um, one as one author rightly described guilt as the um, extreme common emotion, extremely common feeling of emotional distress caused by the belief that we have done something wrong or caused harm to someone else. And then we would have explored um, three different types of guilt. We have um, survival guilt, separation guilt, and unresolved guilt. I know Pastor Ozzy, he would have done counseling over the years. He would have encountered with persons, of course, with his personal experience. Uh, so, Pastor, I just want you, we're going to dialogue a bit over the issue of guilt. And um, remember, for those who are looking, feel free to make your comments. If you have a submission to make, um, feel free to do so. Yes, Pastor. So um, with the whole issue of guilt, tell us a bit about that. All right. Good afternoon, um, Pastor Vivos, and good afternoon to those who are viewing us um, online. Um, thank you for having me on this program. You're welcome. Um, the issue of guilt has, is, is a historic psychological issue uh, and also a historical religious issue. Um, what I'm saying is from as you look at, at various people over the years or as you examine the history of religion, you would realize that people have always been dealing with guilt hmm. because of the fact that there is that there is that um, there is that dichotomy. There is that 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 unresolved challenge where um, a person knows that they did something wrong and it weighs on their conscience and many people are unable to, to channel or to, to uh, provide the right response to what they are experiencing emotionally or psychologically or spiritually. Um, so guilt over the years has been um, something that people have always been um, dealing with. And especially in our, in our age, people have a way of making you feel guilty because of what we call quote unquote friendships and relationships and code of ethics and codes of behavior and things like that. People will 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 cause those established codes um, to, to be a, a way of uh, uh, affecting you emotionally or, 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 or mentally so that you feel a sense of guilt. And of course, there is the issue of guilt where a person um, has a challenge in terms of how they relate to God, 
because mm. there are people who believe that you know they can't come to God because of what they did 10 years ago or five years ago and God might not be able to forgive them or God has not yet forgiven them and 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 if you are within the realms of the of the of the religious faith to which I belong then there are some people who go to the extreme point of saying that even when you are forgiven you are not really forgiven wow <laughs> you know so many people are plagued with with guilt and it 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 can it can affect us tremendously wow thank you very much for sharing that and do you think that can we know as individuals i i know um the, today we're dealing with personal issue today's personal issue today is monday but um is it possible that you can know and you can sense if someone is feeling guilty about a certain situation? Um, is there any reaction or something? Um, there, there, there could be reactions um, based on the, the, the well, like for example, some a person who is feeling guilty towards um, God or, or a person who is experiencing religious or spiritual guilt that person's relation to, to the to anything religious or spiritual will be altered, would be um, affected. A person who is feeling guilty for something that they might have done to another person, um, they might avoid that individual. They may speak less um, positive things about that person, or they may speak more positive things about that person. But there is always a change. To, to be able to say that guilt is manifested in this particular way or that particular way, you might not be able to. In fact, what I have experienced over the years is that some people have been experiencing guilt and they don't even know that that is what they're experiencing. Wow. You know? How is that possible? Be because the, the issue of guilt is not something that we discuss, like, like depression um, and, and those other emotional challenges. We don't have open discussions on guilt. Which is why I applaud the 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 the, the, the program today, the initiative today, um, yeah. the, the the direction of this discussion, because it, it brings to it brings to the fore something that is very very important in the human psyche. In fact, I have seen people in the in the process of dealing with guilt, um, even become depressed, and they are they they have been they have been clinically treated treated for depression. But nobody knows what is giving feed to the depressive um, experience. And when you, when you peel away the layers and you get deep down into what the person is experiencing, they, they have been functioning with this thought that, you know, God has never forgiven me for something that I did 10, 15 years ago. My mm -hmm. friend has not forgiven me. My, my spouse has not forgiven me. Um, and there are some people who hold... Who hold um, a person's behavior, a person's bad choice over the person. Um, they, 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 they are friends, and they are they are people in relationships. They are husbands and wives who will 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 control you using your guilt. You know, um, <laughs> it, yeah. it, it's, it's a very it's a very it's a very pervasive issue. Um, if you go if you go back to if you go back to um, Martin Luther, who was one of yes. the great reformers of the of the 17th century martin luther was at the wittenberg castle staircase there were 95 i think or close to 100 stairs going up to the chapel and he was found one day climbing up the staircase of the chapel on his knees now hmm. in those days the 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 the, 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 the finish that they had on those um on those buildings were not as smooth and and you know well glossed as they are today they they were they were rough you know because those buildings were made out of hewn stone and things like that so martin luther was 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 climbing up the stairs on his knees because he felt that the sins that he has committed mm -hmm. he was not able to earn god's forgiveness just like that so he had to do something, and therefore he got himself involved in what was known at the time as penance. In other words, it is a way to pay back God for the wrong that you have done. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the problem is that some of us might not be able to do that because, uh, you know, we'll have, we'll have an outstanding balance no matter how much we do because of how much wrong we have done. <laughs> so, you know? so true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so the, 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 the issue ahead. of guilt goes back a very far away. Thank you for sharing. And um, to all our viewers, welcome uh, this afternoon. And for those of you who would have tuned in a bit late, you are listening to Pastor Austin Edwards. And he's we looking at guilt and both of us uh, on a spiritual uh, account and a psychological account. So I'm so happy that you're here with us this afternoon. I want to say welcome to all of you. I, I know Sister Greldine, you were here with us this afternoon. Welcome. Um, I just want to read a comment here from Brother Leon Chichester. He says, good afternoon, Pastors. Whenever I commit to something bad or wrong, I always end up feeling guilty. Sometimes even before it happens, I will start to get that feeling. And that's why last week when I spoke about, you know, guilt is something that is good because sometimes when we think about feeling that we will feel guilty, sometimes we don't even want to do what we, were, what we would have set out to do. And he said, but as long as I ask for forgiveness, a little while after that feeling will go away, but the thought is there for a while longer and it's sometimes taunting wow and um sister grelly would have made a comment she says she loves the point that you love the point that you make we all do have an outstanding balance and it brings me to the point whereby i would have about 20 persons or 25 persons i would have messaged and i would have asked them concerning guilt and with the exception of one person every single person responded to me that they would have felt guilty in, in life before and it, it is saying to me that this issue is an issue that nobody is above it. So it doesn't matter whether you're a pastor, it doesn't matter you're the president, who, whatever position you have, spiritual or not, we all have our instances of guilt. But I think the, the, the main thing is that people really don't know how to deal with it. People don't even know um, when they're, as you, you would have made a mention of, people don't even know when they're, if they're feeling guilty or not. So guilt is really, really important. And I, I just want to say welcome so far to the persons I'm seeing. Um, I can't see everybody at the same time, but I'm just going to say welcome to Tricia, um, of course, Brother Leon, Danielle. Janessa, you're here with us today again. I'm so happy that you've been tuning in every single day for the program. Continue to tune in. Uh, Sister Grelin, of course, and we have Troy with Phil. I know Troy has been one a very great supporter also, and we have Nicola Reynolds. So, if your name is, has not been called, it means I, I didn't see it. So don't feel any way, but welcome to the program as we're dealing with overcoming guilt and we're exploring this issue. Yes, Pastor. Yes. Um, so so the, 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 the question then now becomes, how do I deal with guilt? And I, I, want, to, I want to answer that in a broad way before I get to some specifics. Okay, go ahead. Um, when we when 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 you look at children um a two-year-old might be running around in the house and and they know the mother's look when she does not approve of something that they are doing they are familiar with that they become familiar True. with it very early <laughs> and the, the child you know adjusts his or her behavior based on on what what the what the the response of the parent is or or whoever the caregiver might be or the person that they consider to be somebody in authority. The, the thing about it is that um, parents, to a large extent, shape the guilt quotient of their children. That's interesting comment. Parents shape the goal. Okay, I'm, I'm happy. Elaborate a bit on that. Right. So the, 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 the guilt quotient, and I didn't read this anyway. This is what I came up with. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> The guilt quotient is is a person's is a person's ability or a person's awareness of what is right versus wrong and how I should treat with certain types of behavior or or the person that I consider to be in authority okay. that I have offended. Um, for example, as I as a person grows, they grow naturally knowing that it is wrong to take something else that doesn't belong to them naturally sure. there, there's no there, there, there is no there is no um nobody has to tell them that even when even before they are told that they know that you know it's wrong to take something that doesn't belong to them however what 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 that what that um what that's what that says and and if you understand the bible because the bible is the is the authority here on the issue of guilt Definitely. when we understand the bible we know that it, it is the spirit of god 
that puts in us the concept of right and wrong and brings to our co um, consciousness when we do when we did something wrong it is the spirit of god that helps us to you know relate to that however a parent can go beyond what what the spirit does in order to get the child to um to to conform to the behavioral pattern that the parent had set up for the child for example the child likes to run out onto the street it, you know they, they they leave the yard they run out onto the street and the parent doesn't like that because it's a dangerous thing it's it's a fact that it's dangerous to them to run out on the street but the parent in response to that behavior will now cause the child to feel as though every time you run out onto the street you will not get my love you will not get my affection you know um there will be extensive punishment for you and therefore the child will not only know not to run out onto the street but then they will now begin to take on guilt begins to take on another dimension for the child in that they 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 now see that if they are offend somebody or they do something that somebody doesn't like then the punishment is supposed to be extreme it's supposed to be severe <laughs> and when that doesn't happen the person begins to doubt himself or herself hmm. and and sometimes because it is done so repeatedly the child grows up with that with that um with that understanding and it messes up their 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 ability to put relationships into their proper perspectives wow. so a child a child uh, or, or a boy or a girl hitting their teen years with all of this baggage coming up with the disapproval of their of their parents and they reach somebody you now that they that they like or that they that they are fond of and the person begins to run guilt trips on them it it forces them it put, puts pressure on them to do things that they would not that they are not that they know it in within in their heart they should not be doing because the guilt quotient is extended because of the behavior of the parents toward them when they did wrong wow that is so so deep i had to i i literally had to write down that term the guilt quotient because it's for me i mean as, as you said you made up this term but i am learning so much and to our viewers this is eva good afternoon to you um i know we're learning some new information take it in take it in you be you may be able to help um some other person Go ahead, Pastor. Yes. So the, the problem now, the problem too now here is that the parent functions, and I'm using this term loosely for, um, so that I wouldn't be, you know, um, taking the task about on it. The parent functions as God in the child's life until the child understands who God is to them. That they are the, they are the authority figure. They are the ones who help the child, who takes care of the child. Who you know dresses, bathes, shapes their 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 intellect, you know all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> when the child meets God and is ready to transfer that relationship for him or herself to God, they bring along that template mm. of how to deal with guilt. Wow, wow! So and so, so we find, <laughs> yeah. I am thinking now. So is it? possible that anybody who doesn't like for example we're losing the fun um the fundamental principle of the bible so mm -hmm. if the if there are individuals who don't have that principle or they they they're not accustomed to the bible they have never read it before is it possible that they can be able to um to deal with guilt do they see guilt in the same way as we do who are exposed um the truth is i i have not been able to to say that definitively okay um because i have not, every religion has an element of guilt that is built into it okay that, that uh, every religion capitalizes in fact not only religion even the law society the, the yes. natural laws of society when you violate those laws there are there are punishments and many times they they, they, they people are in the in the course of their punishment they they, re, they express great regrets for what they have done not because they have broken the law <laughs> but because society has placed such a heavy burden on them that they feel that they owe society something and and, and as long as they are unable to repay that that 
quote unquote debt that they have to society, they they carry around that that guilty feeling for a while. So in every aspect of life, guilt is guilt is built in there. Wow. Uh, right. And, and it reminds me of um I'm I'm now listening to, even in the, in the law system, no wonder why they say guilty or not guilty. Or right? not guilty, right. <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah. want to shout out to um just before you continue, I just want to shout out to Akisha Monroe. I miss you last week, Akisha. Um, it's good to have you again. Um, Janice was concurring with one. Janice was concurring with one of the points that you would have made. Uh, I want to say welcome to um, Blue, Blue Pan. I hope I'm gonna um, pronounce your name correctly. Um, hi, Demancia. It's good to see you, and I'm so happy that you are you are you are here. You are joining us this afternoon. Um, we have Martin Fields joining us. So welcome to all of our viewers this afternoon. Yes, Pastor. Yes. Now, there's a flip side to what I've been explaining just now. And it, the flip side is found in, in um, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2. 1 Timothy 4 is, is taking a, 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 um, a, a, talking about an issue about um, what will happen in the latter times. Yeah. Uh, many will depart from the faith giving he is seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And in verse 2, it says, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having the conscience seared with a hot iron. Hmm. In other words, people have, they, 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 the one extreme is where people hold on to guilt too strongly or too tightly. And the other extreme is where people altogether try to ignore the feeling of guilt. So th th that those persons have, according to the Bible, have their conscience seared with a hot iron. In other words, as we say in Guyana, cockroach eat out the conscience. <laughs> <laughs> there is no sense of right and wrong. The, 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 this type of person is a dangerous person to be around because there is nothing that guides their behavior. They, they, they are self-centered, they are self-serving, and they, they rarely see anything wrong with what they do. That person is not someone you want to have any extended relationships to be sharing with that person because that person has no sense or very little sense of right and wrong. Wow. Right? That, that the person's conscience is seared with a hot iron. So <laughs> um, it, 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 it's, it's a real issue. And as I said, I'm glad that, 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 that we're given the opportunity to address it. Mm -hmm. um in, in such an open and a public manner because I'm, I'm thinking about the um the new the new norm where persons would usually say it's in philosophical or the the theory whatever they brought out now that there is no absolute right or wrong and you know what what is really and really surprising about that while they would argue for that you know you do whatever you feel like doing there's there is nothing wrong with that but then Yet still, we find that those are the same individuals. If I'm to do something wrong to you, you're going to have an issue with it. But yesterday, you're telling people that, hey, what, go on this um, individualistic approach. Do whatever feels right, whatever you're comfortable with. Approach life in a certain way and um, whatever makes you comfortable. But then at the end of the day, you are disturbed when I come to you and do that. But then again, okay, but you can do it to other persons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and 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 the, the thing about that is that um, guilt has guilt has guilt serves one of the purposes of guilt is to help us to to put some boundaries in our relationships. Definitely. Because because if I if I function as 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 an individual independent of everything else around me, I will not survive. I I basically survive in a community. True. They are family members, friends, co-workers, even the guy that I don't know his name that I bought seasoning from is a person that, you know, is, is, a, is a part of the community that sustains my survival. Yes. And, 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 and even because, but, but my behavior towards him has to have some checks and balances because if every time I go and buy seasoning from the man, and I, I keep robbing him. The next time he's not going to want to sell me. Sure. And I, I, may, I may find another seasoning vendor and, I may, and then I, I, I may do that, the same thing to that person. And eventually I will run out of seasoning vendors. Next thing you know, my food is bland. <laughs> I might not be able to eat. I start, you know. So everything has a rippling effect in the way we relate to other people. 
-hmm. And the way to deal with it, I, I can say for sure, the way to deal with it is not by ignoring the presence of guilt. It is being, it, it is, is finding a way to put it into its right perspective, which yes. is what a lot of people have not been able to do. The people who walk around with guilt, first of all, don't know where to put it. They, hmm. they don't understand where it came from. In many cases, they don't know, even know it's there. And in other cases, they, 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 they carry it around because they feel that even though there is a right place to put it, that that place will not really necessarily accept it. So there, there, there are different reasons that people walk around carrying these guilty feelings with them. And sadly enough, some people act on those feelings. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when when I disappoint somebody that I that I that I care for and that I know care for me, it it makes me feel guilty. Yeah. And in the process of feeling that way, I can choose either to keep it, to process it out of my system, or in some cases to behave as though I never did it, or that you shouldn't feel hmm. the way you feel because of my action. You know, so wow. yeah, um, quite an extensive issue. <laughs> oh my God, I, I'm I'm just oh I'm just so intrigued and in tune with um with today's topic because it's just so so real and um and it's like really and truly practical. I I somebody would have messaged me after last week's presentation and they said to me, I am trying but I just don't know how. To deal with guilt it's like as oh sister event perfect point that i was just about to make is like baggage and um like the writer last week would have alluded to the fact he said at home um, he said guilt is like putting a weight on it's like a weight on your head like a big bag that you have and it's on your head and it's like you're walking around with it so it's so heavy it is so difficult for you to function effectively around and to to do things normal and to operate in the um in the normal sphere of things all right. <laughs> um, so we come to we, we, we come to the to the to the critical part of, of, of our discussion, how yeah. to deal with guilt. How do I deal with it? Um, I did highlight there are four there are four approaches that people have yes. to, um, to dealing with guilt. Um, and you know, as 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 we come up upon it, we, we must first understand as, as, as we were saying earlier, what really is guilt or what really constitutes guilt? Mm -hmm. they, they, you, can be, you, can, you can feel emotional to the varying degrees based on your personality, your attachment to the person, you know, um, your, your expectations of yourself. You, you, you can feel... Um, or your response to the, to, the, to, the, to the feeling of guilt can be determined by, as I said earlier on, your, your history in dealing with the issue. Yeah. Um, and for, for religious people, for religious people, your, the extent to which you feel or you nurture that, that feeling of guilt within yourself can be heavily dependent on what they teach you in your religious experience wow. it can be heavily dependent on that and and we don't want to mix matters on that and, and i know some people would say well you know um guilt is what helps you to come to christ and and and, and whatever whatever the case is but yeah. then when you come to christ if christ has already forgiven me why do i have to walk around with it for five years for ten years hmm. why does the church <laughs> and I, I i i am getting a little um be real. Personal here now. Why Be does real. the church have to bring it up over and over again when it has already been processed out of my out of my out of my um and of my experience? And you know, you know? I, I I must make mention on that point because one of the reasons why a lot of persons leave the church, as they always would say, is not necessarily because of doctrines. It's not because of the fact they don't like God or they don't want the Bible or anything. People many times leave the church because they would have made one error. And how we, I'm saying we, 
as church members, how the leadership of the church make them feel towards this. So, for example, um, let's say I, I've known of situations or and even heard of situations whereby, um, let's say, a young lady would have started having um, sexual intercourse. She hasn't gotten pregnant, but then there is this guilt within her, and she's to her says so she feels as if she can't face anyone. And of course, the others who would have gotten a child, and because of the fact of of the guilt of the guilt of having a child already out of wedlock, the guilt of coming to church and people talking about it, the guilt of feeling as if God may not have forgiven her, and all of these things. And instead of us, would um, as individuals or as the leadership of the church, to give that person our support, many of the times we actually push that person out. So it makes it even difficult for them to overcome that process. So even though God would have dealt with that, they would have asked for forgiveness in some cases, they just cannot fathom the fact that, hey, what, people are, people still have this, as Sister Yvette um, would have rightly said again, that because church members just keep reminding us, bringing, us, bringing up um, the past. So it's difficult for that person to go on. So the best solution that they think, well, it's better for me to leave. Yes, <laughs> yes. All right, so how do I deal with it? And how, how do I process it out? Um, and, and, and I must say that there are two, there are two, there are two um, issues that you must be careful with. You must, yeah. I, you must decide whether you are processing the guilt in or whether you are processing it out. Hmm. Many people process it in because they believe that there is, there is a price that they have to pay. And unless that price is paid, then they they are they, they cannot they cannot let go they are, they are not ready to move on from this issue um a marriage in a marriage the the husband cheats on the wife or vice versa and and that issue is 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 dealt with for years after because either one the the the, the offended party has not forgiven the offender or two the offended party has not forgiven himself or yeah. herself, right? So be very careful with that. Process it out instead of processing it in. Um, there is no reason for you to hold on to it. There is no reason for you to hold on to it. And there are a few biblical models that we want to that we want to use. And the first of which is found in Matthew chapter eighty. This this deals with guilt that comes from social relationships. Okay. Right. In Matthew 18, Jesus said, if you bring your gift to the altar and you find that your brother has ought against you, yep. then you could leave your gift and go and make it right with your brother and come back and offer your sacrifice. So the first thing we want to observe with this is that the, the person at the altar, the only way you can know that your brother has ought against you, which means that you did something to offend the brother. True. The only way to know that is through guilt. <laughs> hmm. Definitely. Definitely. So what Jesus in, in essence is saying here is that if you are at the altar and you feel a sense of guilt, yeah. Then these are th th this is this is what you can do to help you to um to get rid of it. Go and make it right with the with the person. Wow. Right? Go and make it right with the person. Hmm. Now, for some people, we, we gotta be very careful with this because for some people they would prefer to hold that over you true so that they can remain in control of you and, they and when they they, they, they they will <laughs> forgive you they will let go of this one when they find something else to hold on to <laughs> wow right? wow so you've, you've got to be very careful we've got to understand what it means or or, or what making it right entails making it right simply simply means that I go to the person in humility yeah. and, and confess that I have done something wrong mm -hmm. and that I, 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 I want to move on in my relationship with God. And in order for me to do that, I must clear all my accounts in my relationship with, with man. Wow. And I so want you to pause there. Just pause, pause there, and just as you as you continue, continue in a while. 
but there's this question that ties in nicely to what you would have just come in that was that is asked by sister Gwendolyn when she said does ego have anything to do with guilt so as you continue i want you to tie in that questions as we go on that point ego ego on the part of the of the offender or ego on the part of the offended <laughs> well i'm not sure which angle but if you can explore both it would be good because ego on the part of the offender would would not would not make would not cause them to be in the presence of the offended hmm. true ego but on the part of the of the offender would that person would remain there and believe which we have happening quite a lot that person yes. would remain at the altar and believe to all god that they, whatever they are offering god will accept it wow she said the offender <laughs> <laughs> um, so ego on the part of the offender will not move them from the altar hmm. they will insist on offering whatever it is that they have to offer even at the expense and the peril of their own happiness wow wow right? <laughs> yep yeah because ego, the thing ego about on the part of the offended ego on the part of the offended would treat they, they are various types the various kinds of treatment that will be given yeah. when the person who's offended is ego um, is, is egotistical some people ignore some people um prefer to uh instead of instead of acknowledging the pain that was caused as, as a result of the whole thing they behave as though there was no pain caused and you know some some people brush it aside um but a, a person who is genuinely interested in living in good relations with with people around them will not be afraid to if i am offended to say look I, I was hurt to acknowledge my heart to be vulnerable to the pain that i am experiencing and to be able to say look in order for me to get past this we have to talk it out and once we do i i think i i, I it will put me in a better place to move on okay and uh, right? it will put me in a better place to move on Thank you for that. Sister Gwendolyn is saying, she says she's talking about her, let's say about me. My offender would be in my presence and yet not open up and accept it. Hmm. Right. So, <laughs> so for me, I, I, I don't want to acknowledge. Um, and, and, and as I said, dealing with guilt, sometimes people are depressed and they don't realize what is, what is feeding the depression yeah because of the fact that they have not processed the guilt out mm -hmm. you know they, they they have not processed it out so um the first principle as 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 we are as we highlight from from this um Matthew from this 18. passage in matthew mm -hmm. 18 is that i must be a, i must be brave enough to confront yeah the fault or the mistake or the choice or whatever i may, I may call it I must be brave enough to confront it. A person who always operates as though they they were they are always right huh. is a dangerous person. So so true. I want a you to repeat person. that. I want you to repeat that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a, a person a person who behaves as though they have never done anything wrong is not somebody that you know you you want to be around um or any extended period of time that person has no sense of you know what what what, what offense that they have they have committed yeah saying sorry does not make you weak oh so true right it, so it doesn't true. make you strong either it doesn't make you strong mm -hmm. what i will say is a strong person says sorry i love that i love that <laughs> A you strong put that in a court. Put that in a court and say, "Oh, Ed, oh Edwards." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's not about making you weak or making you strong, right? It, it, it's about it's about whether you are operating from a place of strength or whether you're operating from a place of weakness, all right? So the first principle here: talk it out. Be willing to confront the mistake. Be willing to confront the bad choice. Yeah, and right. sometimes I can tell you that is not easy, mm -hmm. but be willing to confront it. Be willing to own responsibility for it. Wow. Okay? And you even know. before, you, when you finish that, I just want to shout out to some persons before you move on to the second point. Right. So let me elaborate on that a little. You let's go back to the Garden of Eden in in Genesis yeah. three. Right. 
when God came to Adam, he said, where are you? Adam said, well, I was I was hiding, you know, I was naked. Adam, God, who told you were naked? Did you eat of the tree that, in the, uh, that I told you not to eat of? He said, the woman made me do it. Instead of owning up mm -hmm. to, his, to his mistake, he deferred the responsibility to the woman. Who then deferred the responsibility to the to the serpent? <laughs> the blame the, the game. Is, <laughs> as 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 a, as a, as a, uh, if I want if I want true emotional healing, if I want true emotional success, I must be able. I must see myself. I must do an inventory of yeah. my strengths and my weaknesses, and I must be comfortable. I must be humble about my strengths and comfortable that I have weaknesses with the fact that I have weaknesses. Wow. Thank you right? so much for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so those who are joining, you're looking at issues in focus with Shibiki Rivals. And I just want to shout out to Garcia. Garcia, is ha I'm so happy to have you here with me today. We have Sparkle. We have um, Nika Chunk. I see so love you. You're here. Welcome. And um, I have Ke Keegan and kevin ramsey and we're looking of course at overcoming guilt um just to remind you you can share this broadcast to anyone so that they can um they can be helped and today we're dealing with this the personal issue um issue of guilt and you're listening to pastor Od osley edwards this afternoon all right go ahead pastor and also yes. oh, one more thing just one more thing feel free to put your questions in as long as we have the time we're going to address it and know um, Brother Leon, Chichester, I've seen your question. I've acknowledged it. We will deal with it um, in a while. Go ahead. Right. So the, the first principle is be responsible for your own um, for your own choices and make amends. Yeah. Be, be, be willing to say sorry for, for whatever it is. When you have done that, that is your responsibility. When you have done that as the offender, whether or not the offended forgives you, Hmm. You have a right to move past that. Wow. You have now, you have now given yourself permission to move past that. Mm -hmm. What am I saying? I, 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 okay. A rape, for mm -hmm. example. You know, somebody was raped and the, and, the, and the offender is identified and, you know, they know who the person is and so on. And the, 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 uh, the offended or the person who was raped is dealing with the emotional fallout from all of that years down the line which is not bad which is not in and of itself wrong because people are affected differently when the innocence is violated true but as that person battles with the emotional challenges that that came as a result of the rape the rapist should not enter into that um in, in, into that arena with, with with the person who has been um offended and, and, and try to make himself or herself go through all of that emotional pain with the other person. Mm. You do not necessarily have the responsibility to stick around. There are things that you can do to help the person overcome some of the emotional challenges that they are experiencing. I'm not saying that you just absorb all the responsibility and walk away. Yeah. But what I am saying is you have permission upon confession to move past that issue personally hmm. if there are some things that you need to stay behind to do to make amends to help to you know put the person back on a place to a place of of of, of emotional or social equilibrium then then you, you you are responsible for doing that but in terms of the way you see the offense you can no longer hold that against yourself once you have already said to that person genuinely mm -hmm. that you no longer feel you know that that you made a you made a bad choice in, in doing what you did you get you confess to the person whatever it is you no longer have that that prerogative to hold that into yourself wow but i think that is very hard the average person that is very especially um the offend the offender oftentimes sometimes it's so difficult to let go and i think i think that's one of the biggest problem that people are people are basically facing so even though you you would have said sorry and and things like that and um but for me as the individual to move on sometimes it's really and truly difficult 
So um, I, I know that was some of the sentiments shared by individuals last week to me. And um, is there any way practical, practically that they can, any practical stuff that they can do maybe to help them with the process besides just talking? All right, this, this, this brings me to the third, um, to the third principle okay. from, from Matthew 18. After you have confessed, some people will forgive you, some people will not. Okay. True. In that case, confession holds more weight than forgiveness. Hmm. In that case, once the confession is genuine, the confession holds more weight than the forgiveness. Because the person who is refusing to forgive is not honoring the, the inherent social obligation that once a person confesses, I am expected to forgive. Right? And and don't 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 be mistaken either. Sometimes a person might be going through the fallout from, from whatever it is that I did to them does not necessarily mean that they didn't forgive me. True. Valid. Valid. Right? It doesn't necessarily mean that. You know? Um, so we, we, we must put all of that into perspective. But once I have confessed and I I I I I, I take responsibility for my for my behavior, I, I, I get to the right person and I confess it. I now need to forgive myself. Yeah. You see. Most of what people hold on to, and I have found this on numerous occasions with people, mm -hmm. including myself. Most of the times we hold on to something, not because the person did not forgive me, but because I did not forgive myself. Wow. Wow. And this is especially this is especially relevant for people who hold themselves to high standards or mm -hmm. higher standards than normal than normal. Um, many of, many of you, I don't want to say me, <laughs> I hold myself to high standards, but, um, but many people, <laughs> many people who hold themselves to high standards are very unforgiving of themselves. True. Yeah. Right. Are very unforgiving of themselves. Give yourself permission to forgive you. Yeah. Look in the mirror and say to whoever you see in the mirror, if you know, by yourself, look in the mirror. Talk to the man in the mirror, according to Michael Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> and say to that person, Osley Edwards, you did X, Y, and Z. It was not good. It was not becoming of you. It is not who you are. It does not fit in with the principles by which you order your life. But even though I know all of these things, I forgive you. Hmm. And I, I, and I think, um, let me just say, welcome to Roxanne and um, Abiola. But I, I think one of the things in terms of persons who would have set themselves to a high standard is the fact that you would have disappointed people along the way this is not, and many times uh, it's it's harder because sometimes it may not be one person but it may be several persons who have been uh, negatively impacted by your actions so even to myself i find myself in situations is like you know um people expect so much from you people are people are looking at you um and then it's like when you make a mistake it's so hard you're so hard on yourself so I had to learn over the years that hear what you live once you make mistake it's quite all right to make mistake because i am not perfect right and um because of that i one of the things i never do is drift away from god during that process of time and i think that that, that makes the the difference because if you you would have done something wrong you already have a high standard set for yourself and then when this thing happens you drift from god instead of coming closer to god it affects you even more so yes. for me, I find I find because I maintain relationship with God, I am able to um, go 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 through the process. Yes, sorry about that. I need to plug in my charger. That's all right. Right. So as I was saying, the the, the, the third the, the third principle, and I don't want I don't want to say steps because they are not steps. One yeah. might come before the other. Right, but the third principle is after you have after you have asked for forgiveness and you have done your part to settle the score with the person that was offended, you now have permission to forgive yourself. Yes. And most of the challenges, as I said before, are bottled up in the fact that the, that I did not forgive me. Hmm. And 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 we want to be sure that you know, even if the other person did not forgive me that i forgive myself yeah right valid, valid so three very very vital principles 
um, from the from the the um, discussion that Jesus had in Matthew chapter eighteen. Mm -hmm. But those are the, so we're talking about social um, social relationships now. The other biblical um, reference that we want to make is 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 the the essence of it is found in Psalm fifty one. Okay. Um, sure. When David when David offended Uriah, now David offended Uriah. He offended Bathsheba. He offended the entire nation. Yep. And he offended God. Mm -hmm. But David comes in Psalm 51 and says, Against you and you alone. I have I <laughs> <laughs> Right? So David, David had David had the right principle with regards to God. Mm -hmm. I would ask some questions about the principle regarding. <laughs> So the other... <laughs> right? I, I will not come to any conclusion, but I will ask some questions. Yeah. As to whether or not, and, and the fact that the fact that he took Bathsheba in as his wife could mean that it was his attempt to remedy the 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 um the situation. To, yeah. On on a social <laughs> level. It could have been for love, or it could have been that you know he loved her, did what they did, and you know, it would be unfair. To you know, just leave her without a husband. You know, um. <laughs> you know, I never looked at it in that way. I, I'm just laughing because, um, <laughs> well, of course, we can't make any speculation because we don't know if he told her sorry. We don't know um, if he would have apologized to the nation direct. We don't know what apart. But for, for, indeed, when when he when he opened for, um, Psalm 51, it's for the first time I'm really thinking about it. It's like, hey, David, it's not only God allow you sin against him, though, but what, right. about, uh, what about what about the other persons around? And I want to, I want to, uh, I want to really make a point in that comment because I don't want anybody else, those who are viewing, to see it as, oh, if David did it, David just spoke to God. I'm just going to talk to God, and I'm not going to go to anybody and and um, ask for their forgiveness or say I'm sorry, right? So we have to be very careful that we have to ensure that we go to others as you would have li um, listened to the points made before. <laughs> yes, Pastor. Yeah, and, and, and thank you for raising that. Let me just go off on a tangent here before I forget to say this. Yeah. I've, I've, I've dealt, I've talked with people who have been having crisis because of their, um, because of the, the, the offense that they did to somebody. Mm -hmm. And the person didn't know about it. Hmm. And they feel that they have to say something to the person. Huh. Now, oh, I'm listening. That is, that is, <laughs> I, I cannot give you a black and white answer or uh, response to that, to that particular issue. But let me say this. Sometimes speaking to the person or bringing it to the attention of the person can do more harm than good yeah yeah sometimes it's just you know god i did this thing i i'm a, I, I did a terrible thing uh, you know but please forgive me and please help this person to operate without the knowledge that this thing has ever happened hmm hmm Sometimes it's, that is it's, a, that it's is a, a really touchy point there, I know, because the thing about it sometimes, but I, I, I understand the point that you're making indeed. Sometimes it can create more harm than good. But then I've seen in situations also where the person may not have known before. And um, it may have been years after, months after they would have discovered it. And the first question is like, why didn't you tell me? You know, this happened so long. Why is it that you hold that as a secret? So... <laughs> I guess maybe we just have to pray and ask God for discernment and direction and, and how to approach matters when it happens. Yeah. And, 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 and that, that was the second point I was going to make on the issue, that sometimes not saying it and it comes up or the information comes out at the, at the, at the wrong time or without <laughs> you there to control the narrative can cause you to lose a friend, lose a partner or, or whatever the case might be. All right. Um, so th that is that is a point that you must you must think very carefully. You must think very um, deeply um, in, in, in consultation with God constantly to decide whether or not you want to. Um, I'm talking about things that the person did not know. I'm not yeah. talking about things that the person knew. You. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
right? If the person knew that, you know, it was I who did it and both of us know, I have a responsibility to, to, um, to make amends with the person. All right. All right, I just want to say welcome to um, Nicola Carmichael. Hi, Annie, welcome. Uh, Sarah and um, Kimmy, uh, of course, we're dealing with overcoming guilt. We have approximately about seven minutes remaining uh, for the program. I, I don't know how much more, Pastor, you have to say, but I just want to really and truly touch on um, Brother Leon's point that he, question that he would have asked. I don't know how best we can tie it in, but I know he was, he was, the question was asked when you made a point before, and it, it reads, could it be that members, that members exhibiting this kind of behavior in and out, in and of themselves also does not understand forgiveness? So that was the point that he would have made. So I don't know how best we can tie that in. All right, I, I, I'll come to that, but let me just rush to say, because I did establish that David's confession in Psalm 51 should form the premise for our relation to God in terms of accessing God's forgiveness. And in fact, First John 1, 9 says it very clearly. If we confess our sins, we, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The, the condition for relieving yourself of the guilt that you feel is confession. Mm -hmm. That's the condition. So David came, he confessed. Firstly, confess it. Secondly, accepted by faith. Yeah. Accepted by faith. You might be in a situation, you made a bad choice, and you never confessed it. You probably had premarital sexual relations or I you know extramarital sexual relations and the and the issue is now coming out. Maybe you discover a couple of weeks down the line that you're pregnant but you never confessed it to God. Hmm. When you confess it, you would still be pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I like that but, point. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that God did not forgive you. Yeah. Definitely. So we are saying claim God's forgiveness by faith. Claim God's forgiveness by faith. And then verse 10 of Psalm 51 is the core of what I want to share with us. Mm -hmm. Psalm 51 verse 10 says what? Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. If I had time, I would have dug into the, the Hebrew um, ideology of a right spirit. Hmm. Um but, go ahead, but suffice it to say for now, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. But suffice it to say for now that the right spirit that David was talking about was to have my thoughts aligned in the right direction. Hmm. So that in the future, I create a mental and a spiritual template or a reorientation of my thought processes that prevents me from repeating this problem. Wow. From repeating this mistake wow right. and, and could it be could it be that is why they um they, there there is a conclusive statement is not that directly said in the bible but when they said that david never did the same sin over again could it be because of that uh, uh, possibly i i'm still to i'm still to accept that david didn't do the same thing twice <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um we, we just don't know but um <laughs> yeah <laughs> but the, the whole the whole thing is listen at the end of the day i i have a responsibility to me to ensure that i protect my emotional my mental my psychological my spiritual state of being by ensuring that i don't make the same choices that caused me the problems in the first place wow wow i i owe it to myself to, to, to do that so when David said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me, he was in actuality saying to God, listen, God, I don't want to, I don't want to be in a, in, a, in a loop, in a cycle, a vicious cycle where I do this thing, I come to you, I confess it, I obtain your forgiveness, I go, I do it again, and I, I yeah. must have a plan to overcome it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and let me say this. Having a plan to overcome it is not the same as overcoming it. Valid. <laughs> Valid. Yep. Because some people struggle with genuine problems. And I was reading this book. Um, try to remember it just now. Um, 
But the the, 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 the the concept of overcoming, the author was saying that many people, when we see when we see the problem that they have as a sin, it probably is an addiction. Hmm. Deep. So <laughs> we'll be dealing with sometime in the future. Yes. Right. So 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 having a plan to overcome it is not the same as overcoming it. But I must make progress. Yeah. I must make progress. If my mind is in, the, if my heart is in the right place, I will make progress on the issues that I come to God to ask him for forgiveness on. Wow. It is inevitable. Progress will be inevitable once my thoughts are in the right place. Even if I delay the act, mm -hmm. I delay the committing of the act for a few maybe minutes or hours or days or whatever the case might be. There must be some progress. When I come back to God on um, to talk about the same issue, I must be able to say, God, I made just a little bit progress. Yeah. Now, as we talk about this, I need your help to make more progress. Mm -hmm. Be real. And and that's the thing. Many times, Pastor, we, when we talk to God, we don't be real with God. It's like, I don't know. Right. We, we we come to an approach like if we hide him from God, God knows everything already. Just, just be real and lay everything on the table when we're dealing with God. Right. And, 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 and the best, the best solution to losing is winning. Oh yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. You need to write these codes down, pastor. Come on. And, and, and start the best solution to, to the losing is winning. So if I've been losing on this matter, on this issue constantly, as I start to win, I develop confidence. My, I get, I get back my, my, my happiness. I, uh, my my equilibrium, my emotional and social and mental equilibrium begins to restore itself because I have moved myself from a place of losing to a place of winning. Beautifully put. Right. Wow. All right. I, I, I think we had a wonderful session um, thus far. I'm really and truly enjoying it. I know we're a bit out of time right now. Um, as I just want to read this point from brother leon chichester he said claim god's forgiveness and move on forget people <laughs> especially those who are less forgiving that is so true and i want to say welcome to um nicola Altar, one of my um friends from new amsterdam multilateral school way back then um thanks for tuning in today hi sister dawn it's good to see you i know um from your busy schedule but please ju just remember you can join me at two on mondays wednesdays and fridays and we have Andrea Charles welcome also. Um, Sister Gwelyn has a comment here. Um, she said, I like, she like eating ice. Well, I know that from long. I don't know, Pastor, you know about that, right? Where she was yeah. sitting and talking about <laughs> <laughs> I'm struggling because it can lead to addiction. However, my plan in place is eating the crunchy flour chicken food. <laughs> oh, so the, 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 um, the, the problem is the crunch. <laughs> yeah, the crunch. Sister <laughs> uh, K. White, welcome. Um, Sister K. White says she said it's one of the best discussion discussions she would have heard in COVID times. Um, yeah, we would have um, learned a whole lot about overcoming guilt today and in the future for the future programs. You will see more. Seeing that finally, thank you, Jesus, I have discovered the um, a new app in terms of having my viewers on live stream so please feel free um if you have specialty in a certain area just let me know so we, we can i can bring you on the program we can have a maximum of six persons on the program which we can have some specialists dealing with matters so pastor osley any closing thought any closing comment as we wrap up this evening this afternoon all right um let, let me just say that that guilt guilt uh, or the conscience because guilt originates with the conscience um, the conscience will always be there to help us to steer us. It is like a, a, a ship in the middle of an, in the midst of the ocean, um, with 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 a direction that it has to go, with a destination. And the sail is up. The wind is in the sail. The wind will blow the ship anywhere. Hmm. But the the conscience or guilt is that one thing that adjusts the sail. So that the wind can hit it the right from the right angle, so the ship can move in the right direction towards its destination. Powerful. All right. So don't 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 um don't don't see guilt as something completely bad. 
or something completely good. But find a balance where um, know what amount of it you are you are to tolerate to keep you motivated to, to, to overcoming and to becoming a better version of yourself. But know when it becomes baggage and when you need to let it go um, and, and walk away from whatever has been causing you unhappiness. Guilt is never meant to cause us unhappiness as long as we as, as long as we confess it. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much, Pastor. And um, of, of course, we're almost out of time. Roger, welcome. Um, and um, Sister Victorine Semple, welcome to you. So I must say it was indeed a great day. Thank you very much for your presentation, Pastor Osley Edwards. Um, I have personally learned a lot, and I know my audience, they're, they're quite satisfied with the presentation also. And I just want to encourage someone. I think we need to, sometime later on, maybe next week, we'll be looking at the issue of forgiveness in more in detail because I realized that while we dealt with guilt and we touched a bit of forgiveness, there, there are so many aspects of forgiveness that I think we need to delve into because there's so many persons who are facing with that issue. So even with overcoming guilt, if you don't know how to forgive and you not, you don't know how to deal with that, um, it might be you may just continue along the guilt way. So thank you, Pastor, a whole lot. And um, you were listening to Issues in Focus with Shibiki Vibers. I'm going to see you again on Wednesday, God's Prayer Life, where we will continue looking at some relational issue. You may see one more guest, or you may see a few other persons as we continue to um, as we continue to look at various topics. May God bless you all. Um, let us just pray. Great God and eternal Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We are thankful, Lord, for the way you would have used Pastor Ozzy Edwards this afternoon. I pray for our viewers in a special way and all individuals who may be facing with guilt. Father God, I pray that you will give them the willpower to forgive themselves, to, to overcome, to move in the direction so that they can have a happy and fulfilling life. Continue to guide us and protect us and direct our pathways. To Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. See you again next time. See you again too on Wednesday at 2 p.m. for another episode. It's using focus with Shibiki Vivos. So long, my friends. <laughs>